So this first article <laughs> caught my attention because of the 2030. It's from a source that I hadn't really ever used before, but uh, thankfully a source that I was using referenced this one. It's from All Israel News. This is uh, Joel C. Rosenberg's site. So for those who are unfamiliar, he's an evangelical living in Israel, um, a Jewish background, but he's obviously he's a Christian. And he the site, which I haven't explored much of, but it seems, seems pretty solid so far. The first story that I read from it, opened my eyes because I hadn't heard anybody else talking about it, literally nobody else. And I keep my my nose on, uh, <laughs> my eyes, I should say, not really my nose, my eyes on as much uh, news as possible, especially as it pertains to, uh, you know, potential world-ending events. So title is 2030 is when the merge happens. And that's a quote from OpenAI president uh, for, the, uh, what's his name, uh, Greg Brockman. And this is what he told Benjamin Netanyahu, as well as um, Elon Musk and other people at a a recent conference. From the article, it it says, In a recent discussion with Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, OpenAI President Greg Brockman expressed his belief that 2029 will be the emergence of artificial general intelligence, AI that reaches and then far surpasses human-level intelligence. He further stated that in 2030, humanity and artificial intelligence will merge now if you did watch my show the last couple of days at least i think i talked about ai both days artificial intelligence is already pretty bad we already have an understanding that it represents a threat does it solve some problems sure there are certain things that it does well and the other things that it does well that aren't good well those are threats but artificial general intelligence is the next evolution that's beyond artificial intelligence there's certain types of artificial intelligence that we've been using for a long time for example automation you could technically say that automation in many many plants that's artificial intelligence it's, yes it's just a simple series of tasks but those tasks are it is there's an intelligence behind them it's programmed that intelligence then uh, enacts these tasks for example on a on an assembly line Artificial intelligence that we've seen, the, the current, the modern iteration, you know, anybody who's ever used ChatGPT, that's through Greg Brockman and OpenAI, anybody who's ever used ChatGPT or you've seen, you know, uh, other other iterations of artificial intelligence out in the wild, you'll know that, okay, so it's kind of creepy. There was a uh, an image that was floating around the internet over the weekend. It was an image of, of a Senator Rand Paul in a robe and barefoot and allegedly you know he he was supposed to be out there and this was his response to chuck schumer's uh changing of the dress code to allow uh, john fetterman senator john fetterman to be a slob and wear his hoodies and shorts and on the senate floor well the, allegedly Rand paul had had protested by wearing his robe and coming in barefoot but it wasn't real and it fooled so many people. I mean, I don't want to call out any names because a lot of these are very intelligent people on social media, uh, intelligent conservatives and non-conservatives alike, who were who saw this. This was an AI-generated image of Rand Paul barefoot in a robe, sitting on the steps of Capitol Hill, and people bought it. That's how good it was. We we've all heard of deep fakes. That's another example of how artificial intelligence algorithms can be used to mimic humans. Now, artificial general intelligence takes it to the next level. Artificial general intelligence uh, establishes essentially unlimited potential for problem solving. It really just comes down to the power of the computer, and the computers can be made more powerful and faster than even the human mind in certain regards. Now, there are other aspects that where it would be challenging, if not impossible, for any computer to be able to match what God created in our mind or even anybody's mind, any 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 animal's mind even, because our minds do operate at a level that is that is different from computer technology. But with that said, when it comes to, for example, mathematical computations, we have, we're not even close. You know, computers are, are already well beyond even the, the most uh, brilliant or autistic human mind. They can figure things out very, very much faster than we can. Okay. When it comes to like math or uh, engineering, and they're saying that this can be applied into medicine, into problem solving, into weapons creation. Now you're starting to see why artificial general intelligence is so terrifying to people like me. I look at it and I think, wow, if they were to take a properly programmed artificial intelligence algorithm, hook it up to a quantum computer, let the, the qubits do their thing, and all of a sudden you have you have the, the end of humanity. And it's funny because in this article, not funny, but it is at least in this article, they do acknowledge Brockman, Greg Brockman from OpenAI, does acknowledge 
the potential risk of artificial general intelligence. Back to the article. Brockman, whose company OpenAI is widely understood to be the most advanced AI project in the world, made these comments during a panel discussion that included Netanyahu, Elon Musk, and MIT physicist Max Tegmark. As they gathered to discuss the future of AI, much of the conversation orbited around two possible futures, a future extinction of mankind and a future, and this is a quote, heaven, in which AGI eliminates poverty, hunger, and sickness, and mankind merges with machines. Now, again, the title of this is 2030 is when they're predicting the merger of man and machine. Crazy stuff. Here's a quote from Brockman. Uh, I think this whole arc in my mind is all about a paradigm shift, right? And I think that even the question of what would uh, that heaven post-AGI positive future look like, I think even that is hard for us to imagine and what the true upside could be. Brockman went on to name one thinker in particular who he believes best understands the future of AI. And it's funny because I mentioned Ray Kurzweil yesterday. I just forgot his name. I think I called him Coswell. <laughs> Ray, uh, Bob, Ray Cosber. Anyway, uh, so here he is, uh, Brockman quoting him. The thinker who I think had the best foresight about how the AI revolution was going to play out is actually Ray Kurzweil, he argued, which uh, with Musk immediately expressing his agreement. Kurzweil, a Jewish author and inventor who currently works as a director of engineering at Google, <laughs> go figure, is a famous transhumanist, most known for his books predicting the singularity. Uh, his book, Singularity is, is Near, gets like a lot of crap, Brockman says. I think, and this is a quote again, more from, um, this is actually, is this a quote from Brockman still? Yeah, I believe it is. Um, yeah, a quote from Brockman. I think that people, you know, kind of assume it's going to be this religious text, but it's instead a very dry analytical text. And he just looks at the computer curves and he says, this is the fundamental unlocker of intelligence. Everyone uh, thought that was crazy, and now it's basically true. It's basically common wisdom. And part of what he said, uh, look, what's going to happen is in 2030, first of all, uh, he says AGI is in 2029. So what they're saying is it was what Kurzweil had predicted, what Brockman and Elon Musk are now agreeing to after the fact is that artificial general intelligence will emerge in 2029 six short years, five and a half short years away. And after that, artificial general intelligence will merge with the human mind, which is pretty darn convenient that Elon Musk is having this discussion. And he, he inject, uh, interjected um, uh, this quote while talking to Brockman. He said, yeah, I keep telling people it seems to be almost exactly right. Back to Brockman, he says, it's spooky, it's spooky. 2030 is when the merge happens. So we've got Neur Neuralink coming and, uh, you know, maybe other systems like that. And what does it mean once you actually are kind of merging with an intelligence? For those who don't know, Neuralink is, that's Elon Musk's project. It's his company. They're already sticking chips into, into monkeys' brains. And they're trying to make it to where a human interface with technology, with the internet, for example, or whatever iteration they, they're able to, to, to have available for us, whenever Neuralink goes live, the idea is that people will be able to access essentially unlimited information and have the ability to you call, I, I hate to sound primitive, but to basically remote control everything through their brain. That's the dream. And when I say dream, obviously for, for me and for I'm sure many of you, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare concept. I don't want a chip in my brain. I don't want anything in my brain. I don't want to be connected to the internet. You can say, oh, there's going to be major advantages to that. Okay, great. You can have your advantages. I don't want them. I don't see an advantage to, you know, let's say there was non non-invasive. Let's say they could just, you know, zap and all of a sudden I've got, I'm connected to the internet. Nope. No, 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 no. This is my brain. My God uh, created this brain in me and in you. And I'm not going to try to improve it. Not, at least not through, through technology. Okay. Do I try to improve it by reading? Absolutely. Do I try to improve it by you know, eating right, getting enough sleep? Sure. I'm not saying that you, oh, you know, you don't do anything. There are things that you can and should do, especially as you get older, to protect and to improve your brain function. This is not one of them. Sorry. 
You know, and it's also convenient that not only is Elon Musk working on Neuralink, he also happens to to have all the internet available to the world. You know, they're up to two million people now, being able to zap the internet down anywhere on the planet. I was talking to to a new uh, friend who he's sailing the world right now with his wife. He's like, yeah, you know, I'm I'm I've got my my internet through Elon Musk. It's great. It's like, eh, yeah, okay. And I, I'm not ripping on that, by the way. I'm, it's I'm just saying there's obviously uh, parallels here. You've got You've got OpenAI, the OpenAI guy, saying that uh, there's going to be a merger, that that artificial general intelligence is going to emerge in 2029 and then merge with humanity, basically man and machine, a year later, 2030, which is obviously conspicuous for many reasons to those of us who have conspiratorial minds. <laughs> then you've got you've got Elon Musk, the richest man in the world, pushing Neuralink, pushing ubiquitous internet connectivity. It's all looking crazy crazy folks and of course ray kurzweil and his concept of the singularity that alone is bad enough it goes on to talk a little bit more, more but, but i'm going to, to stop the article there and again you can find all these articles that i'm going to be talking about today or any day by going to discernreport.com and uh, clicking on the show notes tab uh, there will be old notes I, I don't flush it out so it's going to be notes that you know, even when my show is running back in April, I think I still got notes from from April or May or something like that. So, so just disregard those. Um, focus on the ones that are dated for for now. Okay, um, and those are the stories that we will be discussing. This does make me wonder. Okay, and I know I already talked about gold, but I, I got to throw it out there again. If and when you know you, you've got all these these things that are merging together, coming together before 2030, one of those seems to be a central bank digital currency. And to me, the best protection against such things is number one to just own everything that you can. You know, forget about being able to you know make it to where future purchases are less important. That means stocking up on food. That means getting physical gold and silver available to you. That means trying to to take yourself away from the grid as much as possible. I am a late prepper, but I, I do want to make sure that that uh, other people are, are, if you're not prepping yet, that you start prepping as soon as possible, which is why I started my Substack or one of my Substacks, lateprepper.substack.com. Check it out and start, you know, hopefully, I'll, I'm sure I'll put this this up there as well, <laughs> this article, because this to me is, is, is sometimes you need to get prepper advice, other times you need... Uh, ammunition, we'll call it, information ammunition, to be able to to try to convince friends and loved ones that, hey, maybe things really are getting as crazy as I've been saying for a long, long time. Chances are you've seen ads or heard show hosts talking about the idea of getting free silver. You'll get $5,000, $10,000, $15,000 in free silver if you'll only do business with this gold company or that gold company. Folks, it's not real. I want to, if, if you will, number one, go check out the truth about the quote-unquote free silver by going to discern.tv slash silver, discern.tv slash silver but if you want to be treated honestly if you want it to be to set yourself up with a self-directed ira backed by physical precious metals with a christian company then go to jdrgold.com jdrgold.com genesis gold group will take care of you they will treat you honestly they will help you to secure your retirement in these tumultuous times so check them out go to jdrgold.com today <laughs> 